absolutely everything that you must have for an upcoming baby boy or girl. After conceiving, going through a pregnancy, and finally delivering your baby, you can't be blamed if you start to think that the tough part is behind you. Soon enough though, you'll discover that this simply isn't the case. No matter how prepared you think you are, the truth is that it is never prepared enough. In fact, you probably aren't thinking of anything apart from how beautiful your child is. But that said, are things ready for your child when you both go home from the hospital? Honestly, if you're a first-time parent, you may have a hard time imagining just how much needs to be ready. But that doesn't make it any easier to sort things out. Don't worry. Take deep breaths. We're going to explore every nook and cranny so that, when the time rolls round and you've had your baby, you're going to be fully prepared for him or her. All you need to do is be sure to read, understand, and then act on the advice that we'll provide. Bottom line, your baby deserves the best, and part and parcel of that is ensuring that you have everything ready for them. Many parents actually wait until their child is born, or right before, to start preparing, and this is a big, big mistake. Here's the best advice that you can get, it is never too early to start preparation. Once you know that you're pregnant, you already know that you're going to have a baby pretty soon, and so from that point on, you should start getting prepared. By starting to prepare early, you're going to be giving yourself several advantages. First and foremost among these is the fact that you're going to have ample time to make sure that everything is sorted out. Also, you will be able to more carefully weigh each and every decision that you have to make, so when your baby finally does arrive, everything is just perfect. Naturally, as with everything there are cheaper alternatives, and where possible, we're going to advise you on how best to proceed if you're on a budget. Also, we're going to go about this in an order of importance fashion. That means that we're going to cover the absolute essentials first, and then move on to other things that you should have to. If you're scratching your head right now and wondering as to what exactly we mean don't. Let's jump straight into things and start to look at the absolute essentials that you should have on hand as soon as humanly possible. Absolute essentials for a new arrival. Of all the many things out there that you must have for a baby, these are the things that, no two ways about it, you simply can't do without. Beginning right at the top, you're about to get a full list of what you need to get ready, and some advice as to how you should go about it. Let's get started, shall we? Baby diapers. Surprised that this is right at the top of our list. They are something that you simply can't do without and going home before you have at least a small stock of them would be disastrous. Imagine running around at the last minute searching for diapers. Anyway, the importance of baby diapers is really not too hard to grasp but you may not realize just how important they are. So if you thought that you could get away with having a stock of any less than that think again. Really? You should have at least a couple of days worth of diaper supply at any given time, so that you won't ever run low. Now, generally speaking, there are two main types of diapers that you could use, and these are. 1. That means that once a diaper is dirted, all that you need to do is wash it, dry it, and you can use it again. Also, another consideration is the fact that, being made out of various fabrics, cloth diapers tend to let children's skin breath, and thus prevent frequent diaper rashes, which is definitely something worth considering. However, having to constantly be washing diapers can, needless to say, become a chore. Of course, this is a more expensive option. End of the day, the hallmark of cloth diapers remains the fact that they are reusable which, in contrast to our other type of diaper, is really what distinguishes them. 
two disposable diapers. Once again, the name itself pretty much sums up this type of diaper, and they are essentially one-use diapers that, after dirted, are thrown away. Honestly speaking though, the main advantage of disposable diapers is simply the convenience. Instead of being landed with a load of laundry, you'll be able to just pick up fresh ones and throw away old ones. Knowing the two types of diapers available, you should be able to see now that there are a couple of points worth considering, and mainly these revolve around the fact that cloth diapers are cheaper than disposable diapers, because they are reusable. Some parents find that it is easier to start off with disposable diapers and then move on to cloth diapers later on. That way, initially at least, you won't have that much extra work with the laundry, and will be able to get used to your baby's needs. Course, if you're on a tight budget, you might just want to be using cloth diapers. If you have at least a few diapers around that are a size above that, you'll be prepared for this possibility. More importantly, your baby is going to grow into that larger size anyway, so it's not like you're going to be wasting the diapers. Once you've sorted out the diapers for your eventual baby, it's time we look at the next most important thing that you should be preparing. Sleeping place for the baby. Incidentally, Many people think that the only option for getting a sleeping place ready for the baby is to have a crib. Believe us, you'll want this sorted by the time your baby does get home, so that he or she has a place to sleep right from the start. When weighing your options you need to consider a few things, but as you'll see, once again, preference is going to play a big role in your selection. 1. Primarily, the main advantage of a crib is that it will be a suitable sleeping place for babies until they are about two years old, and are able to crawl or climb out of the crib. Surrounded as it is with fairly high, relatively, fencing, your baby isn't going to be accidentally rolling out, and won't be able to climb out and wander around in the middle of the night without you knowing. As an added advantage, the portable versions of these cribs mean that you can have your child in whatever part of the house you're in. Two co-sleepers. Even if you don't instantly recognize the term, chances are you've seen these contraptions before. Needless to say, when your baby is still very young, this is appealing. It means that you will have almost instantaneous access to your child, and are able to feed him or her in the middle of the night without ever getting up, assuming you keep a bottle of milk handy, or breastfeed. Also, having your baby close by during the first few months is something that many mothers enjoy, and it does help ease your mind, knowing that they're right there. If you're on a tight budget, you might want to skip this and just go for a crib for that reason. Still, if you're able to get a hand-me-down, then that would be nice too. Many of the newer co-sleeper units allow for adjustable heights, and also have various other accessories that could help make life easier, such as a place to hold baby bottles, and so on. Odds are, you've encountered them before, as they, or some version of them, are very often used in hospitals. Basically, they appear to be a cocoon-like bed, big enough to just hold a baby, and therefore light enough to carry around. Therein lies their main advantage, as they are highly portable. Now, as you've probably realized, a bassinet is a great thing to have, even if you already have a crib or co-sleeper. Its portability means that you'll be extending your options and allow you a greater freedom of movement while still knowing that your baby is close enough to you. On the downside though, bassinets are normally only intended for babies up to three, or at very most four, months old. Four cradles. Despite the fact that many regard cradles as a relic of the past, the truth is that they are still as good a sleeping place for a baby as they ever were. Add to that the fact that, Chances are, you can find one fairly cheap, 
and possibly even free as a hand-me-down or family keepsake. Still, due to these similarities, cradles also share similar advantages with bassinets, that being that they are very portable, and can easily provide you with an alternative option to your regular crib. However, this also means that they share similar weaknesses, most notably the fact that after your child is a few months old, he or she will probably outgrow the cradle, and be able to get out of it with ease. End of the day, just as was the case with diapers, your choice of a place to sleep for your child is ultimately just a matter of preference, as you should see now. So, if you're on a budget, as we've noted thus far, you could either just make do with a crib alone, or rely on whatever second-hand items you're able to obtain for cheap prices, or free, of course. Whatever the case, be sure that you have arranged at least some place to sleep for your child before he or she is delivered. After all, with everything else that needs to be sorted out, it really isn't the kind of thing that would pop to mind. But it should be. Although, hopefully, you'll never ever need to use a first aid kit, the simple fact of the matter is that you probably will in some way or other. Nowadays, you can even find infant-oriented first aid kits sold. Otherwise, if you're not so sure of where you can find these, you can even build one yourself from the ground up using just a regular first aid kit. Without a doubt, the same normal ingredients should be there. For example, infant acetaminophen or ibuprofen would be a good place to start. A rectal thermometer and lubricant would be another great addition. Also, you would benefit greatly if you could find out the numbers of pediatricians in your area, or even emergency medical hotlines that you can call, and keep them somewhere in the first aid kit itself. End of the day, anything and everything that would help you in a medical-related situation should be part of your first aid kit. Clothing and miscellaneous wear Honestly, we say miscellaneous wear as well because, naturally, when people say clothing they actually end up leaving out a lot of cloth-related items that they shouldn't. Obviously, clothing is something that is necessary. Here and now, we're going to go over some of the things that you should consider. 1. One Oneses. Heard of these beauties before? Essentially, one ECs are a one-piece article of clothing that have an opening normally at the crotch area. One great advantage of one ECs is the fact that they're gender neutral. Sure, you may already have had an ultrasound and know whether or not you're having a boy or a girl, but if you want to start stocking up before that, well, one ECs are a great way to go. If you live in a country that is cold, then you could even use one ECs as an initial warm layer, and then dress your baby in other clothes on top of it. Thus, one ECs are all the more appealing because you can, quite literally, slip them on and off with ease. Nowadays, this type of clothing come in a variety of designs, and even styles, so you should be able to find something that looks great, but retains the convenience and comfort of one ECs. 2. 3. Baby booties and mittens. Similarly, baby booties and mittens also give that extra mile in terms of protection. In particular, mittens are additionally useful because they'll stop your baby from inadvertently scratching his or herself, and maybe causing rashes to become further inflamed, or hurting his or herself. Other clothing items. When it comes to clothing in general, although we've covered the big items, there is one general rule of thumb that you should always follow, go for functionality as opposed to style. With all the options in baby wear that exist, there's of course going to be the temptation to dress your child in the cutest outfit that you can find. Unfortunately, the cutest outfit may not be the most practical and you could find that having a collection of cute clothing means that you have trouble getting your child in and out of them when they need changing. While it may seem to make sense to buy clothes that are a size or two bigger, 
Since your baby is going to grow into them soon enough anyway, clothes that are too loose can be a health hazard. End of the day, so long as you have a number of sets of practical clothing, enough so that you don't run out, you should be fine. As far as must-have items for babies go, clothes are definitely on the list. Final words on the absolute essentials. Over the course of this guide, we've so far covered the four absolutely essential items that you're going to need for your newborn child. By this point, you should notice that these are simply things that you can't do without. Take time to plan out what you need to purchase, what you can get from other sources, and what exactly you desire. Already, you know all the options that are in front of you, so making a well-informed decision is the only thing left to do. But wait. Even though they weren't, and aren't essential enough for us to discuss them earlier, they are still important enough for you to want to have them. In this next section, we are going to deal with all these other types of items. For now. Just keep the urge to start sorting out your purchases on hold for a moment, while you discover some other amazing items that, when all is said and done, could help you to make your life a lot easier. While it is true that you could, conceivably, manage quite well without some of these items, the truth is that they are going to end up really smoothing the path for you. Some of the items we are about to discuss will help you to save time. Others will make difficult tasks a whole lot easier. And yet others are just downright advisable because they'll be of great benefit to your baby. So, bearing this in mind, over the course of this chapter we're going to be really looking at some extras that will be a great advantage. Shall we begin? Baby car seats. When you first get home from the hospital, you're probably not going to feel like going out for anything at all for quite some time. What if there's an emergency, and you really need to rush off somewhere? What if you need to pop out to the shop to quickly buy something? Naturally, if you have someone else around who could look after your baby, that's fine but what happens when you don't? If you know any parent that has ever tried to strap their baby into a regular car seat using a safety belt, they'll tell you that it is pretty much impossible. Firstly, a seat belt isn't meant for someone that's small, and so its diagonal strap isn't much use at all, and may even start to rub against the baby's head, which could cause injuries. Secondly, even if you do somehow manage to sort out that dreaded strap, your baby isn't going to be secure at all. Not only is it dangerous, but it is reckless, and you should never, ever, even think about doing it. Naturally, the solution to this problem is simple, get a baby car seat. Nowadays, they're really easy to find, and come in a variety of different builds, and price ranges. Now, you have all the freedom of movement you need. Or do you? Baby carriers. Just as with baby seats, these are what you'll need if you plan to walk about and take your newborn with you. Certainly, if you like, you could simply cradle your baby in your arms as you walk, but this is going to cause your arms to ache pretty fast, and also it isn't the safest way to carry your baby anyway what if you accidentally are knocked and drop your child? Because your baby is in front of you, you'll be able to better notice anything and everything about him or her. As an added bonus, some research has shown that babies react and notice more things while they are higher up, and it can even help them to walk faster. Anyway, having a carrier around is going to make your life miles easier, and so you should definitely at least look around and see the options that are available. When your baby is newly born, his or her skin is very sensitive. That's why you're going to need these specialized washing lotions or soaps and shampoos. Furthermore, the shampoos should be the varieties that aren't going to sting his or her eyes, and cause them to tear. Even if you do wash off thoroughly, some chemicals may still remain on your skin, 
and can transfer over by contact, irritating your baby's skin in turn. To avoid this, the solution is simple, just use the same washing lotion or soap as you do for your child. After a couple of months, you won't need to worry about this at all, but it is a great way to dodge some of those initial problems that many parents have. So, with that in mind, let's give you a look at some of the other miscellaneous items that you might want to be looking at. 1. Clean Wipes As you can probably imagine from what we said about how many diapers you'll need, you're going to have to be cleaning your baby a lot, and clean wipes go miles to help you do just that. 2. Baby Bath Tub Although many people use sinks until their babies are big enough for regular bath tubs, having a specialized mini baby bath tub initially would be helpful. 4. Swaddling Blankets Essentially, these are comfortable blankets that you can either wrap your baby in, or lay around the crib, or other sleeping place, for added comfort. Do you get the picture regarding what you should be thinking of? Sure. There are many other items that could be added to that list, but these are by far the most important ones, and the ones that you really shouldn't try to do without. At this point, you're almost done. Believe us, there's no time like the present, and as you'll soon find, time is a luxury that no parent really ever has. There are, quite simply, so many things that you need to do and you're never going to have enough time to do all of them if you wait around. So, start right now. From that list, try to think of where you can get the things that you need. For example, do your parents have an old crib you can take off their hands? Are any of your friends looking to get rid of some of their baby's items? While you're doing this, you should also start to make specific decisions regarding the various options that you know are ahead of you. Start thinking about it now, and by the time you've decided, your list should be complete. All that remains after that is to go out there and get everything ready. Well, if you go about things in the right way, and most importantly, start to do so sooner rather than later. You should have no trouble getting everything ready in time. Then, when you bring your baby home from the hospital, you can rest easy knowing that everything is taken care of. Good luck.